Welcome to this lightning talk about Call for Papers. My name is Marcus, and I'm happy to talk to you about the best, the coolest thing you could do beside your job in the world, which is speaking. So let's get started. I've made this talk uh, as part of the Global Diversity Call for Proposals Day 2019, and I'm happy to be part of the community in Frankfurt who supports this global effort. Um, I'm here because I want to have more people giving talks that don't look like me, like a white European English speaking men, um, because we have enough of those. So let's get started. Let's start with a tweet from Mary Grace in which she says, you don't need to be an expert to give a talk. It is sufficient if you've done something interesting. And if you do, then the chances are pretty high that somebody's interested to hear what you have learned, uh, what your experiences were, and that's basically it, what it needs to make a talk. But how, in order to like give a talk, we need to submit it to a conference and get accepted. And in this talk, we're gonna talk about the call for proposals and what those are. So I'm gonna go over the structure of a proposal, where to find actually calls for proposals in order to know which conferences are asking for them, uh, a little bit about submitting to a conference, um, and two topics that are pretty important for me, uh, which is hashtag pay to speak uh, and code of conduct. Let's look at the structure of a proposal. A proposal has certain elements, um, and one of the, the, the most important part is, I'd say, is actually the speaker profile. So the speaker profile is a short introduction about you, and uh, even if a talk is always about a topic and you are getting invited for the content of your topic, it's also interesting uh, to for conference organizers to create a diverse and interesting mix of speakers because this is what brings people to a conference. A talk is only is a very short and dense version of um, of something. Uh, a conference provides a platform, on the other hand, to get in contact with speakers right away, and that's that's important. So for conference organizers, it's always important to learn something personally about you. That's why you have to provide a speaker profile. And a speaker profile has at least a hundred words. Um, it should be contain something that gives a little bit of information about your professional, your background, why related also to that topic, and some interesting trivia. Like, in the end, answer the question with a with a little bit of wink in an eye, um, why should I talk to you? A photo is also not a bad idea. Um, I'm gonna explain also the parts, the, the contents of the abstracts uh, using a real uh, abstract I submitted um, for uh, this year's conferences. So my speaker profile looks like this. It has roughly, I think, 90 words. It talks a little bit about my experience, um, where I'm currently working at, and which communities I belong to, and what I do in my spare time. Yeah, I live in Norway, so we have a lot of snow. It makes sense for me to have snowshoes and go snowshoeing. You can find this speaker profile um, also on a platform for managing abstracts and submissions, which is called Paper Call. So it's also public. Um, and this will be shared on the con on every conference page that you get accepted. The next part now is about the actual talk. Um, the abstract is the, the the biggest, the main idea of what you're going to talk about in in roughly a tweet. So, if you can put it in a tweet. Um, it's probably a good abstract. It depends on on the submission form and, and the, the, the conference how long the abstract should be. 
But you can imagine that con a big conference receive hundreds of talk submissions. So if you give them like a full page of an abstract and they need to read it and understand it within like uh, it needs it takes them minutes to understand it it will be harder for them to like get the main idea and the important part in preparing a talk is also presenting one main idea and getting it down to this one thing so get your abstract right that's the most important part Part of the abstract is also the title. So you have some leeway and can introduce the abstract there. Um, but really, it's it's not much. In my talk example, I have a long, longish title, Integration Testing a Cloud Native Application with JavaScript. Depending on which conference I'm talking uh, on, I will like modify the title. Um, if the conference is JavaScript specific, it makes sense to include it. Um, I can adapt the talk also to not be language specific. JavaScript is a programming language. And then I can remove that with JavaScript. And the abstract is basically one tweet. I think it's 290 characters, three sentences, the main idea of what I'm going to tell in this talk. Next um, is, are the five key learnings. A lot of conferences are asking for what are the five main takeaways from your talk. This is usually not presented on the conference page if your talk is accepted. But for them, it's also a, an important way for filtering out topics and also seeing which top, talk submissions are similar. So five key learnings. The concept is pretty simple. Write down your main idea first. You should have it from the abstract anyway. Um, and then add four other learnings that are important. Um, it's, it's a bullet point list like this one. Um, and it has five points. So fill it out. You will need it. In, in my real example, um, the five key learnings were I showed uh, the cloud native test pyramid. This is a, a pretty famous figure in uh, the tester world. So understand what the difference there is. Um, then I listing the, basically this is like the outline of my talk repeated uh, in, in the talk submission. It also helps you to later if you're preparing to your talk to have in mind what you want to really talk about and highlight. Keywords are something that is asked on some platforms, also mainly used for grouping talks. Um, some conference websites provide a way for attendees to filter talks by keywords. Um, usually, they are, they are rarely used, but it, it can help to prepare them, um, especially if you're getting surprised on a short-term notice that there is a talk submission and they ask for keywords and maybe take 10 minutes, write down 10 keywords so you have them handy, just in case. The keywords for my talk are basically like take out take the main buzzwords out of the abstract, JavaScript, IoT, BDD, serverless, and AWS. I guess I use them, I, I use them on, on some uh, submitting platforms and pages. So I need them all, of, all the time. One thing you also get to add is notes. Um, you can provide additional context to your submission and this is not used for uh, the audience, for the attendees, but it helps, um, again, if your talk is getting in a, in a later stage to, to a selection, um, helps the organizers to get a better understanding of what your talk, talk is about and how it relates to you and, and like what are you trying to tell there. Um, it is another chance to highlight your why your talk is special because they will read it and it might 
be something that doesn't fit in the abstract because it's too long. In my, in my notes, I provided more background information, where this topic came from, that I like do that at work, and where, what I think uh, is, is the, the important factor um, to learn there and what makes it special and especially interesting. Now, you have your abstract, but like where to put it? There is like the main source for everything related to speaking is Twitter. Um, be on Twitter, follow speakers, follow people, and like call for papers will be announced there and retweeted there. Um, but there are also websites, uh, which I've listed here, that syndicate call for proposals. They provide a newsletter, a daily one, a weekly one, with links to new call for proposals. And this will give you a lot of options where to submit your talk. On the submitting part, um, it's important to understand that you will get rejected a lot. So oversubmit. Oversubmit means if you think you can do two conferences this year, then you need to submit to 20. So depending on how specialized your talk is and um, which kind of conferences you're submitting to, the ratio can be pretty tough. Um, and it's literally like you submit to 10 conferences and get accepted for one. Um, so just submit if it fits, submit. Um, if you get selected, you always get the chance to say, to confirm your submission, say, and think again about if you can attend or if you are having uh, already too many conferences lined up, which could also happen. And yeah, track your submissions. Um, it's it's for you. I think at least I like to to track them and have an overview of uh, where I have submitted. It looks like this. I use Trello um, to also like that. I don't forget uh, where I already submitted. Um, that I don't submit twice, and that I have a like rough understanding of uh, which conferences are going to happen. And there's like yeah, organize it a little. Bit. It's, uh, it helps at least me. So finally, two things that are really important for me is uh, pay to speak. If you're speaking at a conference, then you might think, oh, this is awesome. Uh, I'm going to fly there and I'm going to pay for the tickets, uh, uh, the, the flying tickets. I book my hotel because, hey, this is cool. Um, I'm going to speak there. If you do that, um, then I really... Before you do that, please read these two blog posts I've linked here. Um, it might be affordable for you to pay for your travel costs and uh, you can afford it to go on a conference because you have a safe job. Um, but if you're paying for your own attendance as a speaker on a conference, you're basically taking away a speaking slot from somebody who cannot afford it. That's if we want to change, especially as white male uh, speakers, the, the landscape of tech conferences, we have to keep this in mind and only apply to conferences that pay travel costs. And bonus on top of that, if your company can pay for you, then pay your own travel costs and ask them to give that money forward to, in, for example, sponsor diversity tickets. And the last part is code of conduct. Um, please have a, an eye on uh, submitting to conferences that have code of conduct. And those code of conduct that are actually good ones. If you see a conference that has a like three-line code of conduct that basically says, don't be a jerk, avoid those conferences. Um, that, you, that is a red flag. Look for conferences that have code of conduct that are explicitly written that have sections on how code of conduct will be enforced and where you have the impression that the entire team understands how it works. A great example of a good conference code of conduct is the one of the JSConf. 
that's it from my side. Uh, I'd like to close with a great tweet from uh, Dev Dev Charlie. Um, if you're hesitant to submit a talk, always think about it. It's not you who's going to decide if you have a great idea. Somebody else is. So why not submit? Thank you so much and happy submitting. <laughs>